Oh, what's up, guys? I'm Matt Gary, and on this episode of Coding with the Force, because over a thousand of you have subscribed to this channel, which is honestly baffling to me, mind-boggling, a word, there's a good word, one of those, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you a little bit about who I am, uh, my Salesforce career, and why I started this channel in the first place. So, who am I? Aside from you knowing that my name is Matt Gary, I really don't tell you that much about me, except for the in except for in the about me page of my YouTube channel. So I'm a 14 times certified Salesforce professional. I think it's 14 now. Uh, I'm a certified sale, uh, uh, application and system architect. Take that for what you will. I got to tell you, certifications, in my opinion, don't mean a whole lot. Uh, they indicate to someone that you take your career on the platform pretty seriously. But I have seen people with a lot of certifications that are garbage in comparison to people who have no certifications and just really like to code. Um, so, yeah. Take it for what you will. I know there's a lot of people out there that hire based on certifications alone. Stop it. <laughs> Please. There are some real terrible people out there that have certifications. Interview them and ask them about their development skills. <laughs> ask them development-related questions, rather. Anyway, so I got certs. Uh, I've worked on the platform for six years, and I've also had the opportunity to work on I think 44 implementations of Salesforce now in 24 different orgs. I think those are the right numbers. <laughs> so, several on in several orgs, uh, you know, I've done multiple implementations. So, um, as far as my career, I kind of lucked into Salesforce more or less. Um, six years ago, I was transitioning from. I used to do development work. Uh, not in Salesforce. And then I went to California for a while and I also did some, uh, I went to California for a while and did uh, visual effects for films. Um, none of them were all that notable, but uh, one of them went to Sundance. Uh, another one was a short film for a popular uh, studio called Tippett Studios. Um, then I did some other interesting things like concert visuals for Childish Gambino and some other stuff. Anyway, not a very lucrative career. I wouldn't suggest it for anybody. You have to, you don't get paid very well. <laughs> uh, you have to work really hard to, to find the right, you know, relationships to get you all those different opportunities. And uh, you have to live in huge cities, which are very expensive when you get paid very little. Anyway, so I was looking for an opportunity after that, and uh, I found one thanks to a friend of mine to go work as a, uh, actually as a Java developer for uh, one of the largest consultancy firms. Really, I think it is the largest tech consultancy firm, um, Accenture. So um, I know it's not one of the big four, but it is uh, technology focused, and I don't I don't believe the big four is all technology focused. They've got like finance and other things. So I got an opportunity to go work at Accenture because of one of my friends. And uh, I was supposed to be a Java developer, but they selected, I think, six of us from my incoming Java development class to start a brand new Salesforce uh, group, I guess, of developers for their federal delivery center. So um, Accenture had obviously been doing Salesforce implementations much before then, but I was one of the first at the at the federal side's uh, delivery center, so I got to start that with uh, six other guys, which quickly became around, I think, ten of us, um, and that was great. I mean, <laughs> I love those guys. I still talk to them every day, um, but I, I really got a, I really lucked out with that opportunity. Um, I didn't even really realize how lucky I was. I was a little upset that I wasn't going to be a Java developer at the time, so... Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm grateful I wasn't. I'm, I'm very happy I work in Salesforce as opposed to Java because 
Um, I worked on Java stuff before, and there's so much other garbage you have to deal with uh, as uh, that you don't need to even think about as a Salesforce developer. So anyway, I got that opportunity six years ago. I've worked at a bunch of other places. Uh, I worked on a managed pass package for a Cisco Finesse uh, CTI adapter with a couple other guys uh, when I worked at a company called Teletech, and then I worked at a company called NetSmart, and I worked as uh, the technical architect for um, Hallmark Cards instance, which when I got there was very small, but when I left there was very gigantic. And, um, and uh, I also got the opportunity to work at a place called Code Science. Unfortunately, I didn't stay there long because the coronavirus happened, and somebody at Accenture Federal Services, where I had started, offered me a role there and I was a little code science was a little shaky on their financials and I got scared away and and went to um to a gigantic tech firm Accenture where I'd already been and had a lot of relationships and um I'm very you know I'm glad I I went back although I am a little sad code science is full of extremely brilliant developers so um I was uh, sad I lost out on, you know, went away from that opportunity. But anyway, I'm sorry, Code Science. Thank you really a lot for the opportunity. Um, anyway, I am glad I'm back at Accenture, though. And uh, there I am doing kind of a hybrid of a tech lead in a technical architecture role. Um, I still do a lot of development, but I also do quite a bit of design work for new incoming projects and stuff along those lines. So that's a little bit about my Salesforce career. Uh, outside of Salesforce, some people who do are developers, <laughs> they just develop at work and then they stop. But I'm that crazy guy that develops at work and then I take maybe uh, an hour break and then I come right back and I code. And sometimes it's on Salesforce stuff and sometimes it's my own personal projects. So I think I log close to four to five thousand hours of development time every single year <laughs> um on average anyway and um you know i do lots of different things one time i reverse engineered a, a video game a Har harvest moon 64 a game that i loved just to make a 385 page player's guide um to basically flop and you know not sell really at all and then randomly one day <laughs> i just got the idea hey I, I should just make this free, but maybe I'll start a Kickstarter and see if anybody's interested in at least donating to me because I did do like 6,000 hours of work and then Polygon picked it up and then it exploded. So there's a thing out there about that if you care. Um, <laughs> so I made a player's guide for a game by reverse engineering it. Um, I also done a lot of other stuff, you know, made some games that I'll never release, made some games that I'll never finish. Uh, made some, uh, made an app that I really did finish, but I decided not to release because I didn't want to deal with the marketing and upkeep of it for a thousand, you know, potentially thousands of users. Um, it's this cool thing that lets you search for really good deals on stuff on Craigslist and eBay and Amazon all at the same time. I'm not releasing it though, so don't. <laughs> it'll just be on my phone forever. Um, and uh, yeah, other than that, I got kids. I hang out with them every day. Uh, they're my fave. And I also have a fiance that I love very much. Anyway, why did I start this channel? <laughs> um, because uh, you guys probably don't care about all too, too many of those personal details. Why did I start this channel? I started it because um, I was tired of seeing everybody make paid development tutorials. Look, I realize that I'm probably not going to make any money off this. In fact, I don't uh, really intend to ever make money off of this. If you decide to donate to this channel, um, which several people have, or if you decide to buy a shirt, or you decide to you know, uh, become a Patreon or any of that stuff. 
I'm going to take all that money and I'm going to reinvest it in this channel to provide you guys higher levels of content. You know, I don't know everything about marketing cloud. I can hire a marketing cloud guy to come in and make some tutorials about stuff and provide it to all of you for free, right? And that's my goal is to make really good um, development tutorials, uh, administrative tutorials, um, and architecture tutorials that are historically paid for. And that's kind of frustrating to me, especially because <clears throat> Salesforce delivers so much uh, incredibly well-made content uh, through Trailhead and other means. But lots of people don't learn that way. And I don't mean to knock Salesforce's development channel, but it's hard to sift through and find the really good videos and the really bad videos because there are some really bad videos on Salesforce's development channel. Um, so I want to make a place that's really well curated, that has a lot of really good development content that that anybody can come to and learn for free forever. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I've been very lucky that I've had exceptionally smart people that I've worked with over time. You know, when I started a long, a long time ago, um, there was a, a point where I didn't even know what a map was. <laughs> so if I didn't have those people to teach me, I wouldn't have become as good of a developer as I am now. And if, you know, I, uh, I know that you could learn through reading, but lots of people don't learn that way the best, myself included. Although I've gotten much better at it over time, historically it's been a lot easier for me to follow a live example and then get a idea pop up in my brain after that, you know, uh, at least in the beginning. These days it's, it's not quite that way. I can figure out what I need from reading an article or whatever else, but it took me a long time to kind of train my brain to be that way. And I know that not everybody's brain works that way. And I also know that not everybody that wants to be a Salesforce developer has the money to pay enormous amounts of money to become a Salesforce developer. Um, and I know that because I grew up with uh, kids who were extremely intelligent, but never really got an opportunity. I got... I up in Kansas City. I went to a, uh, you know, a school that wasn't all, you know, that it wasn't quite an inner city school, but it wasn't great. You know, it was a, a low income school. Um, I think everybody was surprised that I even went there. My dad was not going to put me in a private school, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but I got to see what it was like for a lot of people who don't have the privileges that I was given. So I want to be able to give back something. <laughs> and I'll, the best thing I really have to give at this moment is my knowledge on development, on a platform that can, quite frankly, change somebody's life at this point. Um, certainly changed mine. Uh, but becoming a developer on this platform can literally change your life. You can go from, you know, being some random guy who works at Target or something to being an admin on a platform to being a developer on this platform. And, um, you know, that can really turn around a lot of people's lives and, uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen for everybody uh, or that there's enough opportunities out there for everybody, but my hope is that with all these free things that I'm generating, there will be an easier path to get there for a lot of people who need a, a different learning mechanism to get there. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great paid content um, that exists and that's great, but I don't want this to be a pay-to-play world anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to do what I can to make it as open as, and, and as accessible as I can and 
everything that you guys give to me, I'm going to give right back to you um, in different ways. So whether that's hiring somebody to come in and teach about Marketing Cloud or Einstein Analytics or other things that I haven't had as much opportunity to work on like B2C Cloud or whatever else. Um, that's my goal, to make a very well curated t series of tutorials or guides that can help somebody with no experience get a lot of experience, help somebody that is experienced figure out something that's frustratingly difficult um, and they have no idea what the path forward is because they have no one to ask or turn to wherever they work. Um, and, you know, maybe if I'm lucky, teach some of you ultra-advanced, brilliant guys something new too because no matter how smart you get, there's always something else to learn. So um, that's it. That's why I made this channel. That's who I am. And uh, to all the 1,013 subscribers, I think, that subscribe to this channel so far, that's crazy. Uh, thank you. Um, I hope that I've helped you, and I hope I can continue to help you with whatever problems you're facing uh, as a developer. And, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for uh, everything. I will keep making videos. I'm going to go make a video that's actually more useful than this one right now. And um, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.